Good morning. Thank you, everyone, for being here and worshiping God with us at St. Gregory's. Before I begin, I would first like to pause for a moment of silent prayer to remember the victims who, on 21 years ago, on September 11th, lost their lives and, and their families that have suffered since this tragedy. Thank you. What are you worth? When I asked that question, how many of you thought in financial terms? Some of our thoughts regarding finances may at times give us comfort and other times angst. I also recall hearing that our worth is in terms of the elements in our body which, if refined, would be worth about $5. In our modern-day thinking, our potential worth may be calculated in terms of productivity or our ability to earn in the work environment where there is an exchange of service for monetary compensation. But of course, I'm not talking about material worth. Maybe the better way to ask the question is, what? or who gives us our worth? I ask this question as I have considered the gospel stories of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost sons. And yes, it's not just the prodigal that was lost, and the joy that was expressed in them being found, and this joy of finding them was based on their worth to the one searching for them. The coin certainly had a monetary value and the sheep a service value, but the prodigal son taking his material value from his father's inheritance and essentially wasting it certainly would cause one to consider that he was worthless. But actually, the opposite was true. Because of his father's unconditional love, the son was worth more than he could have ever imagined to his father. And the expression of the father's love to the younger son also caused the older son to not see his worth to his father. This story of value and worth as expressed by the father to his sons, the story that Jesus uses to communicate God's unconditional love for us, reminds us that this love remained intact even after the younger son essentially said to his father, I wish you were dead. So in this instance, it is the father who gives his son's value. And we learn in both instances that it's not based on what the sons did or didn't do, but who they were to the father. The father makes the statement, everything I have is, is yours. And he offers the totality of his existence to them simply because they are his sons. And as Jesus uses this story to illustrate God's unconditional love for us, many of us have the same identity crisis. Like the prodigal son, sometimes we are lost when we forget who we are to our Father in heaven. We think that our relationship is based on transactions where we get rewarded based on how we perform. And that is simply not the case. We heard today, even when the son was a long way off, his father saw him in the distance and ran to him. Our father in heaven is constantly searching for us, and he's always ready to welcome us home, even if we have strayed. We see the son express a glimmer of hope when he imagines saying what sounds like an act of contrition to his father. I have sinned against heaven and against you while hoping for forgiveness. However, when the time came for the son to recite these words, his father didn't even need to hear them. Simply, the action and presence of his son returning home told the father all he needed to know. And this coming home of the son as being lost and now found 
causing joy for his father that's similar to the joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. This coming home repentance, when the son discovers who he is to his father, is not just about the father finding his son, but also about the son finding himself. Just as the father told his sons, all I have is yours, God essentially tells all of us the same thing. He has given us this world which he created. He gives us our country, community, family, friends, our very life. The soul that lives inside of us where we are made in his image and likeness are all from him. And he sends himself in the person of Jesus to die for our sins and brings us eternal life. This is how we know God loves us and gives us our worth. Yet it's easy to become consumed by the things of this world and worship the golden calf like they did in the book of Exodus and waste our inheritance on dissipation as the younger son did. However, when we discover who we are to our Heavenly Father is when the light bulb goes off and causes us to want to come home. As we find ourselves as God's children, it causes us to want to live our life in this world according to his will. But also recall the reason that Jesus began telling these parables in the first place. It was because the Pharisees and scribes were complaining that Jesus was welcoming tax collectors and sinners and eating with them. People that the Pharisees and scribes were sure had no worth. Jesus was making it clear. Everyone has value to God. This was also the problem of the older son who concluded that the younger son's behavior should cause him to not have any worth to his father. This is sometimes our issue when we look at the world through our Catholic lens and thinking we're doing pretty good. We are easily able to be critical of others for their lack of faith, morality, or outright sinful behavior. While it's true that we in our world are in the need of repentance, myself being first and foremost, beating people over the head with our righteous clubs, especially on social media, is not going to cause anyone to find their worth and come home. In his book on this gospel titled, The Return of the Prodigal Son, Father Henry Nowen concludes that the point of this parable is for us to become like the Father. Through the course of our lives, we need to grow through the stages of being the prodigal and unduly righteous sons and become like the unconditionally loving Father. And we do so by mimicking Jesus, who in his humanity is the model for us becoming the Father. Jesus left his heavenly home and came to this earth to take our sins, the sins of the younger and older sons, and bring them back to the Father. The Father sending Jesus in love, Jesus accepting his mission in love, and the Holy Spirit dwelling in us in love gives us our value and worth as children of God and call us to live a life of love for all. It's easy to say these words of love for all, but much more difficult to practice. I attended a funeral yesterday for a close family friend of the last almost 50 years. The wife of this couple had been diagnosed with stage four lung cancer on August 4th and on September the 4th, she was called home to the Lord. She always cared about others first and was most happy when everyone else was happy. But her prognosis was so dire and the fight against the disease might kill her. Not wanting to be a burden to her family, she determined that she was ready to go home. The thing that I remembered most about her that she was simply a loving wife, mother, grandmother and friend. 
always very gracious, and I never heard her say a bad word about anyone. She lived this example of simple, unconditional love for everyone. At the wake, funeral mass, and luncheon, I was not surprised by the large number of people in attendance as the outpouring of love for her and her family was tremendous. I was surprised to learn, however, that she didn't think that she had that many friends. It was evident that the stories of her love for others that were shared during this time caused people to want to show their love for her in return, and it was a beautiful thing to behold. As I reflected on this, this caused me to realize how truly humble she was. She simply loved others and expected nothing in return. As she gave value to others through her love, she was happy, and this love impacted the lives of others in a way she could have never imagined. This is living life in the purest form of our existence, being made in God's image and likeness in love and sharing this love with those around us. She now knows for certain how much she is loved by our eternal Father as she is basking in his presence and seeing God face to face. Rest in peace, Ani Fergan Bianco. My prayer for all of us is that we grow daily in the knowledge of who we are to God and live our lives knowing of our true worth to him who created us and share this truth in love with others to help them discover their worth, who they are to God. I pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.